Generally, when we talk about levels, we talk about one of two things. We talk about numbers, and the numbers are one, two, three, and it means early, middle, late. And that's a very basic breakout of how does this disease, we're in the beginning, we're in the early stage, we're in the middle stage, or we're in the late stage. So it goes one, two, three. A second system that's out there is based on a system and a, and a strategy called Global Deterioration Scale, GDS, Global Deterioration Scale. It's a seven point scale. It's a seven point rating system and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, normal cognition, no impairment whatsoever, can do everything they've always been able to do, no evidence of a cognitive impairment. Seven, almost comatose unable to perform any kind of reasonable function, totally dependent on another individual, not able to engage in anything meaningful, okay? In between, we have two, three, four, five, six. The problem with this system, it is an absolutely accurate system of loss. But here's the problem. I'm more interested in what can they still do. I want to know what's left. I want to know what's preserved. I want to know also what I, as a care partner, can do to help them be the best they can be. So I want to know how to cue them. I want to know what kind of interests they might have. I want to know what kind of visual cues, verbal cues, and touch cues are going to be effective at that point in the disease. So there's one more system that has been developed that is around, and it's called Cognitive Disabilities Theory. And it was developed by a woman named Claudia Allen. It's a well-known theory, it's a well-known system, it's out there on the internet, you can go check it out. Here's the main problem, it's a wonderful system because it looks at what can they do, what kind of cues do they like to follow, what are areas of interest they will probably have based on what they still have left. Here's the big problem, it goes 654321. So what that means, if I'm talking Allen levels and you're talking global deterioration, I say she's a two, you go two? No way there she's a two. She's at least a five or a six. How can you think she's a two? This is ridiculous. And what we do is we're arguing numbers, okay, because we're using two very different scales. Here's the other big problem. People are not numbers. I don't people want people to ever become numbers or levels. What I want us to do is look at these individuals that we are trying to help as something unique, precious, and special. Because I believe until you start seeing them that way, you will never treat them well. You will always treat them as less. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to start seeing them as, wow, this is something unusual. This is something unique and special. Wow, this has, this has some value to it. I realize for each of these levels, you also have that, ooh, I'd much rather be back where we were before. But here's what I'm going to tell you. you got to learn how to let that go. Okay. So here's the gems that I chose. And I've chosen these gems because the gems themselves have properties that I find very similar in many ways to the point in the disease where we're talking about. Level six in the Allen level, I don't even talk about it because you and me on a good day. <laughs> it's normal. Now I want to point out on a good day, okay, because stress alone can cause you to be one of these other levels. First level, diamonds, next, emeralds, ambers, rubies, pearls. Diamonds, emeralds, ambers, rubies, pearls. The okay, let's talk about the first level. This is the first sign of something changing. And what we're going to say, what does a diamond look like? Let me have you think about the gem a diamond. Diamonds. Diamonds are still clear, right? Diamonds are sharp. Diamonds have lots of facets to them, so everybody sees a diamond differently. I mean, the diamonds look very different from each angle that you're at. A diamond looks absolutely phenomenal in the right setting. Okay? A diamond is one of the hardest, hardest substances on earth. Diamonds can cut you. Diamonds can cut glass. Diamonds can cut metal. Diamonds don't change. Diamonds are what they are. They are basically, you cannot change a diamond. A diamond is what a diamond is. And here's the last part. A diamond can really shine. And shine you. Yeah, emeralds, things are changing. You've got an emerald, an emerald is no longer clear and sharp. An emerald's got some color to it. And the color is green, which means go, 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 go. These people like to stay busy because emeralds are green, but 
they're in another place and in another time. The other thing about emeralds, they have a few facets, but they're not as many. So people are starting to notice, uh-oh, something's happening. This is not exactly how mom usually is. Um, what you're going to notice, a true emerald, a, a real emerald, not a man-made, a real emerald always has a flaw in it. It's one of the ways you can tell you have an emerald, uh, a real emerald. It's inside, though. So what can an emerald realize? It can't see the flaw. It doesn't know it's making mistakes. So emeralds are also doing time travel. Emeralds are far enough along into the disease. They are not uh, aware of themselves and in this current situation. They take trips, and their trips can be a day, an hour, a year, 5, 30, 50, 80 years of time. And in that moment, they're actually back in another place in a time. So here are some, here are some kickers on emeralds. Emeralds think they're fine. Emeralds get emotional very quickly. Emeralds go from 0 to 60 because they're go, go, go. Their emotions go, 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 too. Uh, they make mistakes, but they don't realize it. Okay. Ambers. This is the next gem. Now, I selected amber because it is, number one, the softest of the gems. I mean, it is the softest. The other thing about amber, amber is made when rosin comes out of a tree, something sticks on the rosin and more rosin flows over top and then it hardens up. And what you have is something that's caught in a moment of time. And ambers are caught in a moment of time. They're not about the past like the emeralds are. They are only in that moment. And it's all about sensation. It is all about sensation. It's all about what they like and what they don't like, what they enjoy and what they don't enjoy. And Next so an amber. Rubies. Um, now, is rubies, the, uh, uh, think about the gem yeah. ruby. What color? Amber. Red. Fine motor stops. Mm. Red. It's a stoplight. Stoplight on fine motor. Fine motor in the mouth. Fine motor in the hands. Fine motor in the feet. Fine motor in the eyes. All the fine skills are gone. They're all about big movement. Now, rubies have really wonderful depth. There's a depth to a ruby that nothing else looks like a, a really beautiful ruby. But I will also tell you there's sometimes hidden depths. Okay? You don't know whether they're there or not. Um, rubies have lots of trouble processing because everything's a stoplight. Okay? Everything's a stoplight. However, gross motors wide open because it's all final fine. level. Pearls. And I selected a pearl because a pearl is hidden inside of an ugly oyster shell. And there ain't much a whole lot uglier than an oyster shell on the outside. I mean, they look really nasty on the outside. You would never think there was something of value in there. And I will also tell you that pearls are hidden with reflexes. Reflexes, reflexes, ref that's what slams that pearl shell, that clam shell closed, that oyster shell is slammed shut. Now, if you jerk it apart, is that healthy? No. no, it's very damaging to the oyster. And what's hidden inside there is this amazing gem. But the gem can't come out very often. Gem's hidden. That gem is truly, and pearls are layer upon layer upon layer.